nights road trip day. Cannot tell you how much I love days like today. I could barely sleep, I was so excited. I wolfed down my breakfast as quickly as possible because there is nothing that excites me more than a big road trip. I'm heading off 330 miles and six hours exactly west to the far southwesterly point of England to Cornwall, where I spend the next two weeks doing a little bit of dog sitting for my parents' dog. I've got the, just the most perfect bike for the job. I can't imagine anything better. 1.9 liters of American muscle in the Harley Davidson Fat Bob. It's really exciting because we've, we've been away for about five or six weeks in India and Sri Lanka. And during that time, we've been busy working, or Monica's mum has been busy working on batch two of the Libertatia tool rolls. We've got two brand new colors, pitch black, British green, and Kalima will be restocked in about three weeks. But when this video goes live, the tool rolls will all be restocked and available for sale. So I will, grab the camera, show my setup for this little ride, and I'll do a little bit of a close-up of the tool roll. I'm quite lucky today, I don't need to pack too heavy because Monica's coming in a few hours time in the car, so this is all about my selfish enjoyment of this ride. So let's start with the tool roll. This is the pitch black color, which I think works so brilliantly with an all blacked out bike like the Fat Bob. Completely black, oil skin, British made, and we've kept the same sand color logo there, still made in England, and even the fabric is a British made fabric with a brass eyelet there that really pops with the pitch black color. We've simply attached this to the handlebar. We'll provide strapping, but sometimes all you need is to use the actual tie for the tool roll. We've made sure the tie for the tool roll is long enough to use as attachment in its own right. I think it looks fantastic like that. On top of that, quad lock with a vibration dampener, so I've got my sat nav. And this, my Exxon Moto waterproof bag. I've just attached this with two rock straps. All this has in it are my waterproofs and some thermals, just in case the weather gets a bit more changeable as I get further west. And that acts as a nice little backrest. The bike's on about 250 miles. It really is brand new. And have a look at this. You may think this is perfectly normal. There, USB. Let me just put the bike back on the stand. Remember that USB point. Looks standard, doesn't it? That's, that should be such a normal thing. Harley Davidson, in my experience, they always put a USB close to the handlebars. It's intuitive. You get on the bike, use your phone, you can plug everything, everything in, and it's easy. But when I was on the Honda Transalp, there was no USB port in the dash area of the bike. You had to actually take the seat off on an adventure bike to have to take the seat off in order to use a USB outlet. It's madness. Well done, Harley Davidson. They get the simple things right every time. It is actually quite nice and early today. I mean, for me, it's quarter to 10, so that's pretty good going. I'm not sure where I'm going to stop on this journey, but I'll just see how I get on for the first two to three hours. I'm too excited. I'm going to smash out as much mileage as possible. You know, just before I left, Monica said to me, oh, Freddie, are you, are you going to be okay? You know, that's a long old ride. Are you sure you're okay doing it? Monica. Monica, there is, it's no chore, no chore to ride for six hours. It's a joy. There is nothing I would rather do. I feel like I've won the lottery. When the weather's out like this, I've got a bike like this. That is just me in the open road.
So I was riding along the motorway just off the south coast of England and I, was, I saw a sign saying Thruxton in one mile time, turn off. And I always go past this sign for Thruxton, never thinking too much of it. But for some reason today, I don't know if it's the weather or having this Harley, I thought, no, you know what? This time I'm going to pull off and see what this little village is all about. The village that has a racetrack, the Thruxton racetrack. This is the village, the racetrack just down the road, where the Triumph Thruxton got its name. It's a village of 600 people. There's been a development here in some way for about a thousand years, and it is picture postcard beautiful. I'm on the village green here. There's a, a red phone box there, which is used as a little library, so you can come and pick your books. There's a little village notice board up there, thatched cottages, birds singing. It's breathtaking. Have a listen to this. Thruxton Race Circuit, just a mile down the road, where the Tramp Thruxton got its name. The Thruxton 500 was a motorcycle endurance race for production-based road machines covering 500 miles and ridden by a team of two riders per machine. The first event was a nine-hour race which took place in 1955, organised by Southampton, just a bit further south, and District Motorcycle Club at the Thruxton Circuit in Hampshire. I think the track opened in 1951 and it was that Thruxton 500 race which is where the Triumph Thruxton got its name. I was chatting, chatting to a gentleman in one of these thatched cottages and he saw me pull up and he said, is that one of the new Harleys? And I didn't realise that he was a Harley guy himself, so I was explaining that it's a 1.9 litre engine and it's gigantic. And then he said, yeah, yeah I've, I've got a, a Road King in my garage. And I asked him, Bearing in mind, he lives in a village called Thruxton. What do you prefer, Harley Davidsons or Triumphs? And he said, it's obvious, of course, it's no contest. Harley Davidson. Just have a look at this. So I've propped up the Harley on the pavement there. But have a look at this, I love it. Little notice board here. So we've got the kind of things going on here in Thruxton. Yesteryear's vintage and classic vehicle show sponsored by MA Vans. But look, at the, look at them. Look at the bike and the car and look at the tractor. That's 11th and 12th of May, Thruxton race circuit. Look at that. I need to try and get down to that. Also, what else do we have? We have roof thatching association, some dog things there, timber framing and Doctor Roofing Construction with a little map and the slightly worn out sign of Thruxton there. Then have a look at this. Repurposed phone box. No longer with a fine phone sign at the top. Now it's got a library sign and you go in, help yourself to a book and I'm sure finish it and put it back there.
Oh, I need to stretch my legs. That's uh, a noticeable difference between the aggressive fat bob and the sport glide that I did the exact same journey on Harley Davidson Sport Glide about eight months ago over to Cornwall. That bike, the Sport Glide, I could ride all the way to Cornwall and the only thing stopping me was having to fill up. With all that extra aggression you get with the fat bob, it does mean that you lose out a little bit of comfort. So I have found that every 90 minutes I have to stop and take a little five minute walk. I'd still describe it as surprisingly comfortable considering the aggression, but definitely it's not the continent crushing levels of all day comfort that you get with the Sport Glide. One thing that surprised me, cruise control. I don't often get to ride bikes with cruise control and that's a little bit of a revelation for me, especially when you get to the points where it's a 50 mile an hour limit and you don't want to constantly be looking down at the speed and then up to see where the next average speed check camera is. No, just click it on to 50 miles an hour and just sit back and cruise. I'm a convert. 90 miles left. I've got more than enough fuel in the tank and I can't wait. I'm genuinely loving every single second. I was just having a coffee and I positioned myself right in the corner there just so I could look at the bike. I liked it when it arrived. You can see all of the bike is all out today. I liked the bike as soon as it arrived, but it's growing on me even more now and it's turning into a very, very strong love. I've done this journey by bike over to Cornwall probably four times. And it's always damage that it's always once you start getting over to Devon and the moors Bodmin Moor those types of areas temperature drops off about five degrees and almost always once you get up into the moor area it starts raining and it's done exactly that this time as well so glad I bought these get the waterproof sun 43 minutes and no sorry 43 miles and one hour six minutes left i was going along about 40 minutes ago and there was definitely a new rider who was going along the motorway at about 45 miles an hour and every time I see a learner rider struggling a bit with confidence I'm always reminded of when I passed my test I had to go into London and I had to ride through really busy London traffic but I had to filter through traffic because well it was just crazy otherwise if I wouldn't and I was so scared filtering through traffic I was almost shaking going past in between the two busy rows of car traffic and I kept nervously looking back behind me because I knew there were three bikes trying to get past but there's nowhere to pull in and I must have looked ridiculous shaking away nervously looking back and then about 10 minutes after doing this there's a Bonneville rider right behind me cool as you like guy open face helmet sunglasses on he pulls up next to me riding about 20 miles an hour I'm there shaking away next to me open face helmet sunglasses just one hand on the throttle left hand on the knee looks at me and he goes are you okay and I'm like just managed to get my my hand off the throttle I'm like yep I'm okay and then he goes just breathe just breathe and then it's like you all right and I said yeah I'm okay and then he whizzed off and I thought what a cool guy if ever I get to that level of riding and manage to look that cool on a bike I'll be happy just shows how quickly we all progress on bikes you know by the end of this summer that person on the bike there 
will be as good as anyone else on the roads, I'm sure, but they probably don't realize it at the time. You know, going along 45 on the motorway, that will change very quickly. It's a great thing about biking. You can see your progress. Look back a few months later and see how far you've come. Made it five minutes away. That's about six and a half hours. No, it's not, that's 6.20. I left at quarter to 10, that's eight and a half hours. Time flies when you're having fun. I mean, the sport, sport bob. God, I'm getting tired. What's the name of this bike? Not a sport bob. Come on, Fred, think. Fat bob. God, I need to sit down. The Fat Bob may not be the continent crusher that the Sport Glide is, but it's a definite mile muncher. I mean, I'm feeling fresh as a daisy after eight and a half hours on and off in the saddle. I've loved it, I've loved it. Right, I'm really hoping, please, please, there's imminently to be a piping hot meal, maybe a little glass of wine waiting for me at my parents' house, so I'm going to Whiz off, I've got two weeks here in Cornwall. I'm over the moon to be here. I love Cornwall. So thank you so much everyone for watching. Have a brilliant day. I'll see you all in the next one.